Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve number of connected components in an undirected graph. And yes, this is once again a problem from our blind 75 list. The link to this spreadsheet will be in the description. If you want to take a look, you can see about 18 people are currently viewing it, including me. But so this is a problem, uh, problem 34 from that list, number of connected components. So this is the graph one we'll be solving today. Probably tomorrow I'll finally go ahead and do Alien Dictionary. So the main reason I've been putting off Alien Dictionary and even this problem is because I couldn't really find a free version of these problems on the website Lint Code. So I actually went ahead and, and shelled out the 35 bucks for a Lint Code uh, monthly uh, premium subscription. So for the next 30 days, I will have Leak Code Premium. So if you have any premium problems that you want to suggest, feel free to do that in the description. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters for making this possible. But yeah, so now let's actually get into the problems. So we're given a graph of n nodes, pretty simple so far. So the number of nodes will be given to us with an integer n, and we're also just given an array of edges belonging to this graph. Every edge is undirected. It connects two nodes, a and b, together. And all we need to do is just return the number of connected components in the graph. Now, what is a connected component? You probably already know, but it's basically just an individual portion of the graph that's all contiguous. See how everything in this portion is connected? We also have a second portion, which is disjoint, right? So these two components are disjoint right? They, they are not connected to each other, but each of them separately is connected, right? Like every of these three nodes is connected together. These two nodes are connected together. Therefore, we have two different contiguous components. So there's not a lot of edge cases with this problem. It's pretty straightforward. So for example, if we were just given two nodes, zero, two, no edges between them, then we would just return the number of nodes we're given, two nodes. Therefore, we have two connected components, right? One node by itself does count as a connected component. And of course, if we're not given any nodes, n equals zero, then we return zero. But clearly, th this is pretty straightforward so far. So there's a couple of ways to solve this problem. So we're given the edges as a list of edges, but we could make an adjacency list, would, which would make it easy to do a DFS search on the entire graph. So that's one way to solve this problem. Just go through every single node starting at zero, right? So we start at zero, then do a DFS search from here. So we're going to mark zero as visited. We're going to see, okay, we can reach a one, mark that as visited. From the one, we can reach a two, mark that as visited. So, so far, we've only done one DFS search right? So therefore, we found one connected component. Now, now we are then going to try to do a DFS starting from one, right? But what we're going to find is that's already been visited. So we don't want to add that to the number of connected components, right? So, so far, we still only have one connected component. We can do the same exact thing for second node. For node number two, it's already been visited. No need to increment the number of connected components. Then we're gonna to get to node three. This one has not been visited. Therefore, now we have two connected components. So now let's just do a DFS on here to mark all of them visited. Three is visited. It has one neighbor, four. Four is visited. And then there's none left. So we got two connected components. We'll try to do a DFS from four, but it's already been visited. So therefore, we, in the end, notice we only had two connected components. Now, this isn't a bad algorithm at all. The overall time complexity is basically gonna be it's basically going to be big O of E plus V because notice we are going to have to go through every single edge when we traverse the graph and when we actually build the adjacency list. And we're also going to have to go through every node iterating through it as we traverse the graph and as we you know try to do a DFS starting at every single position. So this is going to be the overall time complexity. Not bad at all. But there actually happens to be a more natural way to solve this problem. And if you have heard of the algorithm called union find, it's a pretty rare algorithm to need on leak code. But if you do know this algorithm, then you basically know that this algorithm was literally made for a problem like this, literally made to be able to count connected components, as well as to be able to identify, you know, disjoint sets and all that stuff. So I'm going to use this problem as an opportunity to go over union find once again. I think I've done this once before in a previous problem, but let's dive into this. So we're going to mainly be maintaining two arrays, one called the parent array, and we're going to have a value in that array for each node that we're given in the input. And initially, the array is just going to look like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
So each index, so the index zero represents the zero node, index one represents the one node, and the value in every single array clearly matches that of every single node initially at least. So initially they do match. What that basically means is each node is the parent of itself. So the way union find works, it's basically a forest of trees. So we're gonna have multiple trees. Initially, clearly we have N trees. Uh, one for every single node in the input. And as we go through every single edge, such as zero and one, what we're gonna do is take, okay, let's say zero is gonna be the parent. So zero is a parent of itself. But what we're gonna do to one is say, no, one's parent now is going to be zero. Basically what we're doing is just connecting the two nodes, right? And since we know that we just made a single connection, what we can say now is that, okay, we started out with five different connected components. We just merged two of them. Every time we perform a merge, we're basically taking the number of connected components we have, decrementing it by one. So that's how we can keep track of the connected components. And there's one slight un... And it's non-required, but it's an optimization that's pretty easy to make with this problem. We're gonna maintain the rank of every single component. So basically for every single node, we're gonna maintain what's the size of it. Basically, you know, if this is the parent, what's the size of its entire connected component? Right now, what we would initially for each of them, it's obviously gonna be one, right? The size for all of them is gonna be one initially, but since we just made this merge, we're gonna leave the rank of one as it is because it's not the parent, but for the parent zero, we can say, okay, its rank is now not one, it's actually gonna be two. Really, we're just talking about the size if this was the parent, which it is the parent, right? So what in our rank array, we could change the first one into a two. And the reason we're maintaining this rank is basically just an optimization. So right now, you can clearly see we have one component of size two and we have one component of size one. If we were, ha if we were merging these two, right, would we want to merge this one as a child of this one? If we did that, we would get something like this, right? We'd get one and then zero, right? We'd get basically a linked list. So why would we do that when we would rather merge the smaller connected component underneath the bigger one? So if we do that, we'll get something like this, right? And clearly here you can see if this was a tree, the height of the tree is now minimized. Before we had a tree that was basically a linked list. Now we have a tree that's actually kind of a binary tree. If you, you know, adjust your head by 90 degrees, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But so that's the main algorithm. So, so far we've just done the first edge. So now let's look at the second edge in our input one and two. So we're connecting one and two. And the way we're gonna merge these is first we're gonna get the root parent of both of these. So for two, two itself is its parent, but for one, one has another parent zero. So when you get the root parent of two uh, nodes, that's how you know if they're already connected or not. Because if if maybe this two was connected to one, then we would say, okay, one, two's parent is one, one's parent is zero. And, and then what we would say is, okay, one and zero both have the same root parent. So therefore they're already merged. So we don't need to merge them again. But in this case, you can see two has its own, two is the parent of itself. One has a root parent of zero. So therefore they're not connected. So we can connect them together. We can union these two components together. So this one is larger, this one is smaller. So we're gonna add this as a child of zero where we're always adding to the root parent, right? We're not gonna add it to one, we're gonna add it to zero, even though this edge is connecting these two together. When we add that edge itself, we're gonna make sure that two is connected to the root parent because we wanna minimize the height of the tree. And once we do that, we know that the rank of this is actually gonna increase. So in our rank array, we're gonna get rid of two and now it's actually gonna be three. And also what I didn't update in the first go around was the parent of one and two. So one and two have new parents now. They both have parents of zero, zero. So this array is what we're gonna to use to go through every node and find its root parent. So we've done both of the first edges. Now the last and third edge, we're connecting three and four together. So in this case, it doesn't really matter which one is the parent. I'm just gonna draw it like this because it's easier. So three will be the parent of four. So for node three, we will update its rank. Its rank is gonna be two. 
and the parent of three is going to stay the same, but the parent of four is now going to be three. So that's just kind of the bookkeeping we're going to be doing to update our parent and rank arrays. But each time we made a union operation, we were taking our initial number of components, five, decrementing it by one. And so we did a union three different times. So we got a result of two. Two is the number of connected components we have at the end. But let's say we just had one more edge. Let's say we had an edge zero, two. So let's say we're trying to merge zero and two, right? First, we'll get the parent of two, the root parent, which is zero. Then we'll get the root parent of zero. Zero is the root parent of zero. So what we're gonna find, since both of these have the exact same root parent, that means they're already connected. So we had two connected components. We're not gonna decrement this by one because we didn't end up you know, decreasing the number of connected components. We didn't even do a union operation. So in that case, we would return before we made any changes to the graph. Once we see that they both have the same parent, Parent, we return immediately. So that's the main idea of this algorithm. Once you've implemented it, you've written it out and coded it once or twice or three times, it gets pretty straightforward because most union find problems are pretty similar. So now let's get into the code. And like I said, this is a leak code premium problem. But if you don't have leak code premium, I'd recommend solving leak code 547. So this problem, leak code 547, number of provinces is pretty much exactly like a union find problem. So if you wanna practice union find, go ahead and do it on this problem. It's pretty much the exact same. So like I mentioned, we're gonna have a parent array, initially each node. So for i in range of n, each node is just gonna be the parent of itself. And we're gonna have a list of ranks. Each uh, you know component is just gonna have a rank of one initially, so. And then we're gonna define our two functions, find and union. Find is the simpler one, so let's start with that. Let's say we're given a node, n1. We wanna find its root parent. So for n1, we wanna return its root parent. So initially, we'll just set the result equal to n1, and we'll say while result is not equal to the parent of itself. We know we can stop searching once we've gotten to a node where the node itself is its own parent because that means we can't go any higher. We found the root parent. So in that case, what we would do is just return the result, which is the root parent. But if we don't have that, what we can do then is basically update the current pointer to be uh, its parent, right? We just wanna go up that chain until we get to the parent. Now, before we do that, one thing I didn't mention in the drawing explanation because I don't wanna get too in depth, it's basically an idea of path compression. I would Google it, it's pretty simple to understand. That's just kind of how union find problems are optimized. It's just adding one line of code which can optimize it. So basically what we're saying is before we go to the parent, we want to set the parent of result equal to its grandparent. So if we did have a linked list that we were going up the chain of, what we would do now is basically make the linked list a little bit shorter. So we're just setting our parent equal to the parent of our parent if it happens to exist. If it doesn't exist, if we don't actually have a grandparent, then this line will basically do nothing. So that's pretty simple for the find function. And last, we're gonna do the union. So we're gonna take two nodes this time, N1 and N2, and we wanna union their components together. So first thing we need to do is find the root parents of each of these nodes. This is exactly why we just wrote our find function first, because we wanna get the root parents of N1 and N2, and then we can go ahead and merge them together. Now, it's possible that they have the same parent, in which case we're just going to return immediately. So if P1 equals P2, we're going to return immediately. We're going to return zero to indicate that we did not actually perform a union. Otherwise, we're actually going to do the union. And remember, we're going to do this union by rank. So let's say the rank of P2 is greater than the rank of P1. In that case, P2 is gonna be the parent of P1. So we're gonna say for P1, let's set its parent equal to P2. And then we can increase the rank of P2 because since it's the parent, we've just added some children to it. So we're gonna to add to it the rank of whatever P1 happened to be before that. And the else case is basically just doing the exact opposite of this. So that would be if P1 was greater, therefore we'd want P2 P1 to be the parent of P2, and we'd want to increase the rank of P1 by whatever the rank of P2 happened to be before that. 
once that's all said and done, we're just gonna return one to indicate that we actually did perform a successful union. And those return values are gonna come in useful for us right about now when we go through every single edge. So let's go through every single edge, which is a pair of nodes in our input edges. So we're gonna be unioning N1 and N2 together. So we can call union on N1 and N2. Remember the number of connected components we initially start out with is N. So we're gonna set the result equal to N. Every time we perform a successful union operation, we want to decrement the result by one, which is the return value of union if it's successful. If it's unsuccessful, then we're gonna return zero, in which case our result is not gonna be updated at all, right? If we don't perform a union, there's no need to update the number of connected components. So you can see that the math works out pretty nicely for us. Once that is completed, we can go ahead and return the result, which is the number of connected components. That's what we originally wanted to do. And it wouldn't be a video of mine without a typo. I don't know how I missed it, but on this first line, I didn't actually declare the variable. So for i in range n, you probably caught that earlier. So sorry if it was frustrating to watch, but as you can see, we've run the code and this problem is pretty efficient. Union find is about as efficient as you can get for this problem. This problem is literally made for union finding. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.